Imagine human beings living in an underground cave, with an entrance a long way up, which is both open to the light and as wide as the cave itself. They've been there since childhood, fixed in the same place, with their legs and necks chained so that they cannot move and can only see in front of them, because their chains prevent them from turning their heads round. Light is provided by a fire burning far above and behind them. Also behind them, but on higher ground, there is a path stretching between them and the fire. Imagine that along this path a low wall has been built, like the screen in front of puppeteers, above which they show their puppets. Then also imagine that there are people along the wall carrying all kinds of artifacts that project above it. Statues of people and other animals, made out of stone, wood, and every material. And as you'd expect, some of the carriers are talking and some are silent. They are like us. Do you suppose, first of all, that these prisoners see anything of themselves and one another besides the shadows that the fire casts on the wall in front of them? What about the things being carried along the wall? Isn't the same true of them? And if they can talk to one another, don't you think they'd suppose that the names they used apply to the things they see before them? And what if their prison also had an echo from the wall facing them? Don't you think they'd believe that the shadows passing in front of them were talking whenever one of the carriers passing along the wall was doing so? To them, the truth would be literally nothing but the shadows of the images. Now consider what will naturally follow if the prisoners are released from their bonds and cured of their ignorance. At first, when any of them is liberated and suddenly compelled to stand up, turn his head, walk and look up toward the light, he will suffer sharp pains. The glare will distress him, and he will be unable to see the things whose shadows he had seen before. What do you think he'd say if someone told him that what he saw before was an illusion, but that now, because he is closer to the things that have more real existence, he has clearer vision? What will be his reply? And you may further imagine that his instructor is pointing to the objects as they pass and requiring him to name them. Will he not be perplexed? Don't you think that he'd believe that the things he saw earlier were truer than the ones he was now being shown? And if someone compelled him to look at the light itself, wouldn't his eyes hurt? And wouldn't he turn around and flee toward the things he's used to seeing, believing that they're really clearer than the ones he is being shown? And if someone dragged him away from there by force, up the rough, steep path, and didn't let him go until he dragged him into the sunlight. Wouldn't he be pained and irritated at being treated that way? And when he came into the light with the sun filling his eyes, wouldn't he be unable to see a single one of the things now said to be true? He'd need time to get adjusted before he could see things in the world above. At first he'd see shadows most easily then images of men and other things in water, then the things themselves. Of these, he'd be able to study the things in the sky, and the sky itself more easily at night, looking at the light of the stars and moon, than during the day, looking at the sun and the light of the sun. Finally, he'd be able to see the sun, not the images of it in water or some other conditioning medium, but the sun itself in its own place, and he'd be able to study and know it as it is. And at this point he would infer and conclude that the sun provides the seasons and the years, governs everything in the visible world, and is in some way the cause of all the things that he used to see. What about when he reminds himself of his first dwelling place, his fellow prisoners, and what passed for wisdom there.
Don't you think that he'd count himself happy for the change, and pity the others? And if there had been any honors, praises or prizes among them, for the one who was sharpest at identifying the shadows as they passed by, and who best remembered which usually came earlier, which later, and which simultaneously, and who could thus best divine the future, do you think that he would desire these rewards, or envy those among the prisoners who were honored and held power? Instead, wouldn't he feel with Homer that he'd much prefer to work the earth as a serf to another, one without possessions, and go through any sufferings, rather than share their opinions and live as they do? I suppose that he would rather suffer anything than live like that. Consider this too, if this man went down into the cave again, and sat down in his same seat, wouldn't his eyes coming suddenly out of the sun like that be filled with darkness? And before his eyes had recovered, and the adjustment would not be quick, while his vision was still dim, if he had to compete again and recognizing the shadows with the prisoners who had never moved out of the cave, wouldn't he invite ridicule? Wouldn't it be said of him that he returned from his upward journey with his eyesight ruined, and that it isn't worthwhile even to try to travel upward? And as for anyone who tried to free them and lead them upward, if they can somehow get their hands on him, wouldn't they kill him? They certainly would.